Is anyone yeah. got... Uh, hang on, I'll check Speaking it. is now streaming live on custom live streaming service. What's that? That yeah, is that, that, that Facebook is that. and YouTube at the same time, if we get it right. Excellent. <laughs> you, know, you know, there's an old text saying, Intel inside, idiot outside. It depends if the idiot has... <laughs> Yeah, it's usually operator error, isn't it? Uh, okay, we are live on the Facebook. Okay, we better behave ourselves. Right, so... Um, good afternoon, hopefully, when you're watching this. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, or whatever whatever time it is. Welcome back to TPP from your fantastically long summer break. Hopefully you had a nice time. Got a great program for you this time. Um, actually, we better let someone wants to come in. Um, I better let him in, actually. Listen, I, I knew having a break was a bad idea. It's, I've forgotten how to do all of this stuff. So... Welcome back to TPP. Today, we've got a fantastic guest. Hey, Linda Wright, planning specialist, planning consultant, AKA the headmistress. Well, she's trying to get a new name for herself. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the next, we'll talk about that next time she's on. So for the moment, she's still the headmistress and you'll know why when you hear her speak. Before we go over to Linda, we've got a special announcement from Ranjit. Ranjit, over to you, sir. Take it away. Oh, do you want to share your slides, I guess? Better put the 50Ps in. I've done that an hour ago. <laughs> oh, you no, know. I'm out now. I'm out, is it? Yeah, let, let, let's see if you can share, if you still remember how to share slides. Go for it. Yeah, the memory's working there. Is it working? Yep, you're on. Go for it. Excellent. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ranjit from Property Investor News. We've been publishing this magazine for the last 18, sorry, 19 plus years. It provides education, knowledge. Three, it gives you analysis, news, research on property market every month. It has prepared thousands of other subscribers for boom, bust, crisis cycles for the last 19 plus years. It will prepare you to remember after a boom, there is a recession or crisis. And after recession or crisis, there is a boom time. Fortunes are made by those who are prepared. How do you prepare yourself? Become educated, knowledgeable and informed investor by subscribing to Property Investor News. Offer we have for you that's on the screen in front of you six issues of Property Investor News Magazine, plus the book Before the Hammer Falls, written by two auction experts, and a bonus book, The Party Wall Act 1996, a simplified guide, again written by an expert on party wall matters. All you have to do is go onto our website, subscribe, and then email me with your name, postal address, and the long reference number that the system will generate. You're welcome to take a, a, a picture of the screen, which has got all the details. Please just remember, be decisive, right or wrong, make the decision. The road of life is paid with flat squirrels who couldn't make up, the who couldn't decide or make the decision. Don't be a squirrel. Make a decision, subscribe to Property Investor News. I'll leave you with this. Your health is your real wealth. My son Jiwan Singh is doing one million step challenge for Diabetes Org UK. One million steps is equal to 500 miles or 19 full marathons. Please support him by donating as much as you can because every little helps. Please go to the web, his web page and make a donation. Just remember, no diabetes, fight diabetes. From Jeevan Singh and myself and Dil, thank you in advance for supporting this cause. And my contact details, back to you, Dil. Thank you, Ranjit. Um, you'll have to, can I have my camera back, please? 
No, we've got to stop sharing slides. So just on that fantastic challenge, um, we, we've put together a little um, bonus bonus back. I'm donating some of my books, some trainings that I've done. I'll, I'll be putting up, um, unfortunately, my family's um, uh, had personal experience of this uh, very horrible disease. So I've shot a little video for Ranjit. I'll be putting it up on a Facebook um, probably tomorrow or Saturday. Please donate. So it's a really great cause. Um, re really uh, horrible disease. Um, my father suffered from it really badly, and uh, he almost had his leg amputated in St. Mary's. Um, really, really horrible story. And, and don't really want to go into it at the moment. But look, please support. If, if all you do is understand how you can get rid of this disease without even going on medication, have a look at the video I'll post to you tomorrow. We're also going to do a little, um, I'm, I'm donating some of my stuff to Ranjit's, um, Jeevan's uh, fantastic challenge. And uh, look, one million steps is 19 marathons. I, I usually get smug about the one little one I did in 2018. But Jeevan, fantastic for taking this action. Really glad. And it's a great, it's the right type of millionaire to be. And just to finish off, we're going to talk about wealth now and property and so forth. Just don't forget, your health is your most important aspect of your wealth. So, Rajit, thank you for that. And uh, great challenge. Well done. And uh, thank you for letting us support Jeevan on this. Right. Back to back to the interesting, the the let. I can't say it's lesser interesting, but I guess back to what we're here for. So thank you, Ranjit. Great challenge. And I'm glad I'm not doing the million steps and it's Jeevan. All we're doing is talking about it and helping, helping him raise some funds and uh, you know, letting him do the million steps. Fantastic. Right. We've got a really great guest this afternoon. The legendary Linda Wright, a.k.a. the headmistress. She's trying to have a name change, but we're going to debate that shortly. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to take up any more of a time. Look. Put down your colouring pencils, you know, get rid of those. Get your pens and notebooks out. Start taking some notes. She's going to give us some fantastic information. Linda, over to you. And I'll put the 50Ps in for you so you can share your slides as well. Thank you. That's so kind. I appreciate it. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. How are we? Can you see the screen? Just yes, we, yes, we can. Yeah. yes, we can. Excellent. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this presentation on planning. If you're not interested in planning, you're on the wrong channel. So I would go away and make a cup of tea now. But this is what we're talking about now. I, I have done several of these presentations and webinars and videos and all sorts of things. And I had somebody come on and say, I've got this property. And he was going on about the property and where it was and everything else. And it turns out it was in Wales. And I said, you can't do any of this stuff that I'm talking about in Wales. So the planning reforms that I am talking about are for England only. Nothing to do with Scotland or Northern Ireland. Scotland is a, a, a completely different system. So let's talk about OMG. I'm going to talk about some of the earlier planning reforms that happened last year. Um, might talk about what might happen in the future. Probably not because nobody knows. But let's start with... 30th of June, Boris Johnson, God love him, did a build, build, build speech that said, basically, we were going to build our way out of this pandemic. Um, wasn't quite convinced. I found this um, uh, picture in the Yorkshire Post, which just amused me. And at that point, we had Robert Jenrick, who was the head of housing, and we had the delightful Dominic Cummings. That's uh, and they th were threatening to take an axe to the planning system. We get to September 2021 and it's all changed. And we now have Michael Gove, who I don't know about you, and I suppose you have to be of a certain age for this, but somebody posted it on LinkedIn. And I thought, my God, that's brilliant. He looks like Joe 90. And now you'll have the Joe 90, if you're of an age, you'll have the Joe 90 theme tune in your head and you won't be able to get rid of it. Now, Michael Gove, that is 
all the media and all the tabloids and the, well actually not the tabloids the times are saying oh michael gove is putting the brakes on the planning reforms the new planning the pa planning bill that came out last year it's all being cut back it's all being watered down well it, it to be perfectly honest it's not just michael gove and boris johnson when the planning bill came out 12 months ago over over 12 months ago um Robert Jenrick was still in position, in post, and there were lots and lots of objections to this, uh, to the new reform of zonings in the English planning system. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan, so it, it's that that is under scrutiny now, and the entire planning bill looks like it is going to have a major rethink. So there could be even more reforms on the horizon, uh, watch this space. Quickly to do an overview of planning reforms starting in 2020 uh, and continuing up until now, and we're in September 2021. So the new reforms that came in, the, one of the major ones was the changes to the use classes order. The use classes order hadn't been changed since 1987. What happened was there was a new use class E brought in. There was also use class F1 and F2 and our old favourite, the sui generis. There had to be, a, there was a transitional period. It's now ended now, ended on the 31st of July. There was a transitional period because the use classes order and the general permitted development order had changed so differently between them that there had to be this transitional period. The old style prior approvals, if you got an old style prior approval uh, with an application that was submitted before the 31st of July, then that now lasts for three years. But don't think you can be doing these now. All of the old style prior approvals, such as uh, class O, office to residential, have ended. They've been replaced with other things, but you can't be very careful if you're looking at properties um, on auction sites, because these will have a very definite sell-by date. So upward extensions, nobody thought that this was going to come out, but it has. A, a, an additional two stories on the top of purpose-built blocks of flats. Lots of hoops to jump through with these things. You can't just go ahead and do it. All of these things require the submission of a prior approval application to the council. And there are a lot more uh, requirements with these applications now. The enlargement of dwelling houses by the additional of, of stories, not to create flats, but simply to enlarge personal domestic dwellings. Also, additional stories to dwellings and mixed use commercial properties to create new flats on top. This is all about trying to increase the number of housing units in the country. Uh, lots of offices have been converted to residential, but a lot of those residential units, especially in Greater uh, London, have been converted to service accommodation. So that takes them out of the residential market. So what the government are trying to do are get these 300 houses per year. Well, those are new build ones, but they're also trying to increase the housing stock. And this is the reason for this. Demolition rebuild. This had been talked about for about five years. Nobody ever thought it was going to come into fruition. It has. Purpose-built offices and purpose-built blocks of flats can now be demolished and rebuilt. So that's an overview of what's been happening. And then I'll come on to what's been happening this, uh, the last lot of, of stuff that's happened this year. Stuff, that's a very technical term. Right, let's, first of all, upward extensions. Let's give you some pretty pictures to look at. Um, upward extensions. The regs came in, came into effect on the 1st of August last year. So. There will be quite a few of these will have been submitted to councils now. It's badged as permitted development. It's not. It's part 20, new part 20, class A, if you're looking at the general permitted development order, new dwelling houses on detached blocks of flats. So it's to put an additional two storeys on the top of blocks of flats and to create new flats in up to two storeys. I put some nice little pictures there. Um, it just shows you an idea of what can be done. Um, whether your local council would approve such um, additions, I don't know, because there's lots of hoops to jump through. So 
it consists of uh, engineering operations reasonably necessary. You can replace plant. It's got to have construction of an appropriate and safe access. And there's other storage and waste and other auxiliary facilities that can be done as part of this. So this is, as of the 1st of August last year, part 20, class A, new dwelling houses, new floors on detached blocks of flats, up to two. They must be detached blocks. They can't have been converted from office to residential under the prior approval, under the class O prior approval system. They have to have been purpose built. So one and two story extensions. This also came in on the 31st of August last year. First and one and two story extensions to dwellings and mixed use properties. Now, this is quite complicated because in the same statutory instrument, the same um, uh, amendment, um, there were two parts to this, one of which was class AA, which is your enlargement of a dwelling house by putting an additional two stories on it. So it's just to create a bigger house. It's not to do anything else. You can't start adding a flat on top of your house. That's not what it's about. Not, not with class AA. Then that was part one. In part, the new part 20, they've added two, class AA, AB, AC and AD. Now, this is where you could put new dwellings on a dwelling house, but not by using part one, class AA. So this gives you the opportunity, subject to the prior approval process, to put new flats on top of detached buildings used as commercial or mixed use and detached buildings used as residential dwellings. It also gives you the opportunity to do the same thing with terraced properties. So it's not simply detached buildings. So those are the different classes. If you want to know all of the details, you're going to have to read the legislation. I don't have time to go through it all here. Uh, construction of up to two stories, additional stories on any of these properties, provided it's reasonable. And if you've got a bungalow, if you've got a one story bungalow, you can only go up one story. It would look a bit top heavy putting two stories on a bungalow and that would need full planning permission. Subject to a prior approval. It's got loads of things that the council can look at. You, you will have to jump through a whole load of hoops to get these things. So where the new accommodation is an extension to a, an existing dwelling, it may be you've got to use part one. And if it's to create flats, it's part 20. I'm hoping that this makes sense to you because I'm, I'm going through it at breakneck speed. Right. This was the biggie that came through. And this was the third amendment. This is now class ZA. And I'm so pleased that they put a Z in front of that because all of these class A's are doing my heading, quite frankly. Uh, part 20, the heading is demolition of building and buildings and construction of new dwelling houses in their place. The legislation always talks about dwelling houses. What it means is, is basically flat. They can be mezzanette, so they can be two-storey. So, um, you know, don't think, but dwelling houses sounds a bit weird. It sounds like you're on a, a bellway or a, a wimpy estate or a persimmon estate, and they've got to be actual dwelling houses. They don't. They Generally, in this case, it will be flat. So it only applies to the demolition of a single purpose-built detached block of flats. So if it's attached to any other building, you can't do it. And any other single detached building in what was a B1 use. So that was a general office uh, research and development, that type of use. So it's office type of use. And it had to have existed on the 12th of March, 2020. So uh, just over 18 months now. It can be demolished and replaced with a single building, either a, another purpose-built detached block of flats or a purpose-built detached single house. So that's for the smaller blocks of flats. Obviously, if you, want to, if you want to demolish that and just put a house on there, you can do it. And it includes associated operations. Now, as you can imagine, um, there's a, quite a lot of architects out, out there who aren't really happy with this. There's quite a lot of other um, construction type. The people in the industry think that this is not a great idea, that there's, there's very few limits on this. But 
in fairness, there are lots of requirements that have to be submitted with a prior approval. It's not a full planning application, but you would think it was with all of the requirements, such as design and external appearance of the new building, transport and highways, noise, amenity, um, and what it will do to the area to introduce residential property if it's surrounded by businesses. And you've got to do the method of demolition. Now, this permission is only available, it's not available if the building that you're going to demolish was constructed after the 31st of December 1989. So that if you work sort of 1990, that's like 31. If it's less than 31 years old, then I think the reason for this is that the um, central government are saying, well, would you really want to demolish a building that's only 30 years old? Do you, maybe you could keep it and refurbish it and something like that. So I don't know what the reasoning behind that was, but that's kind of what I think. You can't do this to an unlisted building in a conservation area where the footprint of the new building will go beyond the footprint of the existing. Overall height, you can't go more than seven metres and the overall height is 18 metres above ground level. The new building, in any case, can't be more than two stories higher than the old building. Are, are we confused yet? I'm trying to quickly go through this. That's the demolition and rebuild. It came into effect at 10 a.m. No idea why. 30th of August 2020. And it is Class ZA, demolish and rebuild. The use classes order, the use classes order from 1987, it's been tweaked every year since, but on the 1st of September 2020, the new use class E came into effect. This now, this is commercial business and service, and it combines A1, A2, A3, and I've put them all, laid them all out there for you so that you know what I'm talking about. Classes B1, A, B and C, office, business, research and development type of business uses. Class D1 in part and class D2 in part. They also added uh, class F1, learning and non-residential institutions. And they also added class F2, local and community. I've not gone into detail on those because I'm just concentrating on change of use and, and residential at the moment. So class E is now your covers now all of the old former uses. And if you want to move in between all of these A1, A2, A3, B1, all of that, there is no planning permission required. It's not permitted development. It's just not seen as development at all. So if you have a shop, and you have a tenant that wants to come and use it as a gym, they can move in. If you have a cafe or a restaurant and you want a tenant who wants to come in and use it as a, a creche or a nursery or a yoga studio, they can just come in and do it. Can't do external works, obviously, but the use, it is there. You need no planning permission. Sui generis, class, the former class A4 pubs, and Class A5 hot food takeaways have been put into sui generis, along with all of the other stuff that's in there, which means that you're going to need full planning permission to do certain things. Um, but there are some exceptions with hot food takeaways that I'll talk about in a minute. So that's the use classes order. If you want to know more about the use classes order, go online and put in Litchfield's Guide to the Use Classes Order. Uh, Litchfield's Planning Consultancy is, in my opinion, the best guide to this, and it will give you all of the changes of use that you can and can't do in a very succinct and colourful guide. With all of these prior approvals, as from the 1st of August 2020, it was found that... <sighs> Some people were submitting planning applications that resulted in cave dwelling. So you have to do adequate levels of natural light to all habitable rooms now. And you have to prove this in your prior approval application with detailed floor plans showing the use of each room and where the doors and windows are going to be. If you do not do this, the local planning authorities now have the power to refuse because, the, because of the failure to provide adequate levels of natural light. They have the power and they will refuse to grant prior approval. So 
also part of the prior approval, as from the 6th of April this year, came in quite late, minimum size standards, anything, any development that is proposed under the prior approval procedure has to be an absolute minimum of 39 square meters for a single person living in a one bed flat with a bathroom on one floor. Now, if you don't have a full bathroom, but you have a shower room, it can go down to 37 square meters. But this is the new minimum space. Well, it's been around for, since 2015, but it's not mandatory. Not all councils have to use this. However, for prior approval development, you do have to do this. This is um, the nationally described space standard table which shows you 39 square meters. If you go to a two person one bed, it should really be 50 square meters. I don't quite know how that is monitored, but that's the table. It's the uh, table 3.2, uh, I think it is in the London plan. They keep sort of changing the numbers, but it, it's in the housing chapter in the London plan, but it, it, that is part of the nationally described space standards. Lots of councils have adopted it. Manchester, for example, have adopted this across the board. Some councils, you have to be very careful if you're doing full planning applications, they may have space standards that are higher than this. So, right, where did the oh my God come from? If you remember right at the beginning on my the front of my slide. So, oh my God, let's have a look at this. Class O. Class O offices to residential, the conversion that was 96 pounds and was relatively easy to do has gone. So that's your O of the OMG. Class O, gone. No longer part, you can't deal with it, forget it. Class M, now I'm putting these pictures on here to try and get them fixed in your brain. Class M, M in the Bond movies, obviously. This has changed. It's it stayed as class M, but the um, what it's referring to has changed uh, quite significantly, actually. It's about changing certain uses, such as laundrette, betting office, payday loan shop, hot food takeaway. Do you remember I said earlier there were certain uh, exemptions? Changing these and converting these to class C3 dwelling houses. So the change of use of a building, either it can be a single use or it can be a mixed use, it doesn't matter, uh, to a use, uh, to a class C3 dwelling. Now it is dwelling, it's not HMOs and it's not serviced accommodation, it is class C3 dwellings, together with any building operations reasonably necessary. The maximum floor space on class M is 150 square meters, so it's not massive. So you can't put extensions on. There is partial demolition allowed. Can't do it in list, on listed buildings or in conservation areas. So that is that is a no no. Most of the stuff that we normally see transport and highways, contamination, flood risk, provision of services such as a laundrette. If they if it's thought to be vital that that betting office is in that location. Can't really see any planner arguing that, but you never know. The design and external of appearance of the building and the provision of adequate natural light to all habitable rooms. So class G, now I've put GGs on here. You need to be aware of this class G up until August this year was fully permitted. You could just go take the upper floors above a shop or a laundry uh, shop or uh, I don't know a, a dress shop or uh, tobacco do we have tobacconists anymore but that kind of any kind of generic shop or generic commercial uh, offices estate agents that kind of thing you could take the upper floors and you could convert it to up to two flats now, you couldn't use any part of the ground floor. You have to be careful with that. You can't put, say, a kitchen or a bathroom on the ground floor behind the shop bit, but it's just to convert the upper floors. And this was brought in by central government a while ago um, to try and get more vitality and nighttime uh, movement in the town centres. So class G, 
Conversion of the Class B uses, which you remember we talked about a few slides back, commercial business and service, or betting office or payday loan shop to a mixed use of up to two flats. So you can still have the shop on the ground floor, you can have two flats above. The ground floor is not to be used in part as the flat. Now, I, I, I said that. And the flat, any flat is to be used as a dwelling house by a single person or a family or by not more than six residents living together as a single household. So they have to be living together. So it's a classic, can be HMO, but there has to be, um, it has to be evident that the residents are living together as a single household. So there has to be some communal facility. And to be perfectly honest, most of these buildings that you're gonna be converting are not big enough to do that. So you've gotta be very careful with that. Matters that can be considered are our old favourites, contamination, flood risk, noise. Now, an addition to this is arrangements for the storage and maintenance, management, maintenance, management of domestic waste. So basically, they want to know where the bins are going to be stored. OK, so that's OMG. Now, let's throw a spanner in the works and talk about the new class MA. This is the one really that is gonna um, replace the old class O. Uh, and I've not got time to talk about fees, but the fees have gone stratospheric. So you can no longer just pay 96 pounds and uh, convert a building to 100 flats. That's not happening anymore. All of the fees are different and they're all massively increased, an absolute minimum of £100 per flat. So you need to be aware of that when you're, you're doing your spreadsheets and that. New Class MA, conversion of Class E, so we talked about it, commercial business and service, to Class C3 residential. So it's development consisting of a change of use and any land within its curtilage to class E, to resi from class E to class C, three dwelling houses. The building must have been, now I've put here used. Now uh, that, I, I, I need to take issue with myself on that. It must have fallen into a class E use. So forget the used, it must have fallen within a class E use or all of the other A1, A2, A3, B, all of those. Class E for two years continuously. And also it has to have been vacant for three months before you can submit your prior approval application to the council. So that is something that you need to get your head around uh, with regard to rents and tenants and all of that kind of thing. The maximum cumulative floor space of the existing building that is to change should not exceed 1,500 square metres. It's not that the overall floor space of the building must be less than 1,500 square metres. It is simply that area that is changing use. So you can't do this on listed buildings, as you would expect, or within the curtilage and any other special protected areas. So, again, we've got the old um, chestnuts of transport impacts, safe site access, contamination, flood risks, all of these things. You've got to look at health centres and whether their loss is going to be a problem. If you're going to be doing this in heavy industry area, then is it going to uh, have an impact, a direct impact on the future occupants? Also with this one, they have added in, and I'm not convinced about this. I understand where it's come from. It's come from the Grenfell disaster. But I'm not entirely convinced that it belongs in the planning legislation. I, I think this is really, uh, I, I think it's wrong to be asking the planners to assess this. I think it should be um, stick with uh, building regulations. So where the development meets the fire risk condition and the fire safety impacts on the intended occupants of the building. So I take that to mean that anytime you submit a prior approval under class MA, there's gonna to have to be a fire report. So that's all adding to the amount of work that you're gonna to have to do before you submit one of these applications. So you get planning approval, woohoo! So many people come to me you need to read the decision notice. 
They don't read the decision. The first condition on any decision notice, and with these prior approvals, you get a decision letter, not a notice. You need to read condition number one. That will normally be your time limit. Most of the prior approvals will be three years, but you need to know the council can make it less than that if they wish. Normally they would do it in, in communication with you, but they don't have to. It doesn't, but most of the prior approvals are three years, but not all planning approvals have a three year time limit. So you need to read. The conditions will vary council to council. Some will put lots on, some will only put a few. So read condition number one. If there are lots of conditions, there may be a possibility that you have to discharge some conditions before you start work, such as, I don't know, landscaping, car parking layout. Uh, th there's all sorts of things. Um, submission of the materials or, or uh, details of the materials. So that will have to be done before you start work. And a new application is required to discharge these conditions. And if you don't discharge conditions, then there is a possibility it can completely invalidate your planning consent. So you do need to be aware of this. Some conditions are what they call precedent. Uh, so those are the ones that need to be discharged before starting work. There will also be some conditions on there that say uh, they should be discharged before any new residential units are occupied. And that is such as parking provision and stuff like that. So please read your decision notice, especially if you're going to auction, read the um, legal pack. If you're buying independently from a direct to vendor type of thing and they say, oh, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll get you the stuff. I'll get you the stuff. No, you do not sign on the dotted line until you have all of the information that you need. It's all about you doing your due diligence. So my process, as you can, as you would expect, is planning led. My company, we do the drawing, so you don't need to go to an architect uh, unless you particularly have an architect that you work with all the time. But you can come to us. We will do the survey. My, my, uh, my guys who are architectural technologists will do the surveys for you. They will do the existing drawings, the proposed drawings. We do them so that they comply with planning policy. If you just want a telephone consultation because you just want to know whether your uh, proposal is really going to work, then fine. I can do feasibility reports. A lot of people don't want feasibility reports these days. They just want to know. So the telephone consultation is easier. I will do pre-application consultation with councils, although, quite frankly, unless it's a very complicated matter, I think it's a waste of time. I submit the application, monitor and manage it for any objections or problems, handle any disputes and liaise with the council on your behalf. So that's my process. This is how you can contact me. Don't try going on my website. I'm still trying to get it built. Started this at the beginning of the year because I thought there wasn't, be, wasn't going to be much going on. There has been. Um, you can do a 30 minute telephone consultation with me. You can contact uh, us on admin at Planet Right. Those are the telephone numbers, £197 plus VAT. Um, we can do it on Zoom, Google Meet, Teams, or just a straightforward uh, telephone consultation. Please uh, don't, don't try and friend me on Facebook. I tend to leave that for friends and family. Contact me on LinkedIn, uh, Linda Wright, and at Planet Linda on Twitter. When the uh, website is back up and running, you can have a look on the website. But those are my contact details. That's me done. Thank you very much, everybody. They've all just disappeared now. Oh, look, Dill's back. There we go. I was, I was, I was um, paying attention, actually, honestly. <laughs> go to the top of the class. Um, look, thank you for your time. I, I know we're getting to the end of the program. I'm going to ask you a qu couple of questions. Right. If I'm allowed, is that okay? You are allowed, yes, my dear. Please, miss. Right. Um, Three-year time constraint on um, on planning conditions. Is that still that they have to start, or is that a case that they've got to be finished? No, no, no. The, the, right. OK, the, there may be it, and it depends on the planning application, but uh, your planning consent last and, and a prior approval, if granted, will last for three years. What what you are supposed to do 
is discharge any conditions. And there tend to be more conditions on a full planning application. Discharge any conditions within that three year time period to allow you to start the work within that three year time period. And, and don't be fooled because it takes weeks and months to discharge planning conditions, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's usually two rounds of eight, eight weeks submission because they take eight weeks to reply. They usually end up refusing the first lot because they don't like the color of your tiles or the paint. Well, they don't, they don't with mine, but you know, that's entirely up to you. Well, obviously, the, yes. So yeah, the, so, and there's, there's boroughs that are worse than others. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And some councils are struggling with resources. They've got people working from home. They've been doing this for 18 months. Why they're still struggling, I don't know. But some people are now, uh, their children are isolating. People have got COVID. So, you know, so there's a, there's a, there are quite a few problems uh, going on. And then the, the learning all of the new planning reforms as well so I, I do feel for councils yeah good luck with that one uh, selling that one right uh, okay so it's, <laughs> it's sorry it's it's three years to discharge the precedent conditions i'm i'm assuming well, it's, i would i i would advise that you get your planning conditions discharged in the first year yeah. then at least if you've done all of that you're ready to start don't leave it until you know submitting your application to discharge conditions in year two month 11 because you you're going to run out of time and your consent will expire right and and it used to be the old thing that you dig a hole in the ground and get planning uh, no. to come and all that sort of stuff can't, can't. it has to be a substantial start um, and i had this conversation with a, a, a council uh, in the northwest and somebody had gone ahead and dug a hole in the ground and it's not a start so what, what's a substantial start? I, every council will interpret that differently, so I can't answer that. I, I would say that you have discharged all your conditions, you've gone on site. Um, if it's a, a new build, for example, you've gone on site, um, you've put your services in, you've dug your foundations, you've put your foundations in, and you've got brickwork up to... Um, at least window height on the ground floor. I would say that was a substantial start. Wow. Okay. So that's that's a lot more than I I would have yeah. previously thought. So yeah. thank you for that. Some but, people have got away with a lot of you know just digging a hole on site. Yeah. They've got away with it for years. It, it won't wash now. Uh, councils won't accept it. Right. Okay. Great. Uh, that's that's really interesting. That's a really good point. Uh, once once you get a planning permission, are councils allowed to Legally cancel it. <laughs> Are we talking about the swale debacle? I'm not sure, actually. Oh, have you have you have you not seen um, the, the the guy the guy who was supposed to test the technology and yeah. then just fired yeah. it off and gave everybody permission? Yes, that that sort of yeah, I, I, and yeah. and uh, comments like uh, it's whack, mate. It's proper whack, and some i young it person that has been putting this they've been testing it and it's it's accidentally gone out and accidentally approved um uh some stuff and refused some other stuff so what they're having to do there it's very very difficult for a council to rescind a planning application what a planning permission once it's been made it's not an easy task you can't just say to the applicant, oh, we're terribly sorry. Can you just give us, because it's all online now, uh, you know, before it would be, oh, just give us the piece of paper back and we'll sort it out. No, 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 there's none of that now. So with Swale, because these decisions have gone out, they have, uh, they've uh, indicated to all of the, uh, all of the applicants that this was a mistake. What they are having to do is they are having to go to the high court to ask permission for a judicial review against themselves. So I'm, I'm hoping that the judge who takes the case grants them permission for this judicial review. I'm, I'm sure that will happen. And what you have to do generally, if you are objecting to something and you want a judicial review, if, some, if the council has approved something and you are objecting, you tend to have to uh, apply to the High Court within six weeks. It's supposed to be three months, but the court prefers it to be about six weeks. So you apply um, to the High Court for permission. If a judge 
reviews the case and says, yes, you have permission, then it goes the full. It's probably going to take about three months. Um, and it's I, I feel for the poor applicants because it's the time and the cost uh, and all of the time that they've been spending on their applications. Um, so that's that's the process that in this case, the council are having to go through a judicial review against themselves in the High Court. Wow. Sorry, uh, Srinjal, uh, uh, actually, just to follow that up, mm -hmm. wasn't there a case of that one lot of supermarkets would object to another lot of supermarkets' permission? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I heard about I, the uh, Competition yeah. is, is not a, a valid planning ground for objection. And yes, if people have loads of money... Uh, and loads of time to spend on this, then you know. But it is it's 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 a lot of money to issue a judicial review because you have to um, get all the legal team together and and, and take it to the high court. So um, yeah, that's that's how they're doing it uh, with the swale issue. Well, wow, really interesting, Srinder. You 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 want to ask a question? I'm guessing. No, no, I'm just listening. I'm taking it all in. You 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 saving your fifty p's. No, up. it's no questions. He don't care. <laughs> All right, so that's a really interesting run through. Um, could you put your details back on the screen? Because I think that's that's the best money anybody can spend. You know, just just get a heads up and stop working. That's, that's very kind of you to say that. I will do that. There we no, go. No, look. People muck around doing all sorts of stupid stuff, trying to fill in a form and just waste their time. And you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you are, I'm sure you've seen it loads of times. It's like I have. I've oh. had people come to me in tears on the phone yeah. and yeah. say, you know, what can I, what can I do now? And I, I've had to say to people, nothing. Um, I'm sorry. It's it's a bit like playing poker. Uh, you, if you show your hand, quite honestly, you're stuffed. Yeah. So when when you say that there's nothing they can do. It depends. I've, I've had I've had people come to me and say, well, fix it. And I've said, well, no, I can't because you've already, you know, the council, councils aren't stupid. Council planners aren't stupid. If you submit an application and try and get it through and then say, oh, no, no well, no, it's all right. I'm not going to do that now. Well, they know they've seen it. You've, you've shown them. So they know if you try and do things sneakily and in increments then they're not stupid they know what you're about they'll put conditions on so this this is where you you've told them the end game in a sense yeah yeah exactly yeah it's shown your hand okay well it's not as simple as well we'll start again because no you, there was one um can't remember who it was or what council it was now, and I'm, I'm not going to mention it anyhow but he had had a refusal of a prior approval um, and he said, well, what can I do? Uh, because his agent had not advised him correctly and it was it was a bit of a mess. Uh, what can I do now? Well, I said, you have to wait 10 years. And wow. he, laughed, he laughed and said, you're joking. And I said, no, I'm not. Wow. So it's not just the case of you wasted six weeks for the 56 days or whatever the turnaround is. And depends on what the issue is. It could be serious damage. So that's that's really interesting to point oh. out, you know, because a lot, a lot of people say, well, it's a form. I, I see this a lot in my thing. I, yeah, I, was, it's, I mean, you're going to charge me how much for filling a form in? And you yeah. go, well, it's not quite that. Yeah. No, I mean, I was talking to a guy this morning and... You know, people think, oh, I, I can download. By the way, this is my favourite hobby, or the government booklet's wrong. I'll, I'll stop talking about that on Party Wall. <laughs> so they, they just follow it and said, oh, I've sent the guy, uh, I, I've emailed him the notice. I said, we shouldn't have done that. You, you know, you're doing it. anyway. This. So look, it, it's not a case of just losing your six weeks or eight weeks. There could be some, as, as you said, the 10 year scenario, you, you, you could probably do some proper long-lasting damage, damage. Yeah. to the uplift value of your site. So that, I wish I, I wish I didn't ask that question, actually, now. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry. Um, yeah, have we got time for one one more question, if I can sneak one more in? Yep. Biggest um, biggest opportunity around London, South East. What, what, what are your feelings on that? I haven't a clue. 
I mean, if you can find buildings that you can add these floors to, or if you can find buildings that you can demolish and rebuild under this prior approval system, but you have to, you know, look at the checklist for whatever you're going to do and make sure you don't, you, you don't want to go buying a building. You know, I, I always say to people, if you, go, if you want to do something of this type, get an option agreement. Don't buy it before you've got planning permission. But then vendors don't want to wait. They want the money. They want to go and lie on the beach in Barbados. They, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to enter into joint ventures. They just want to 12 weeks until you've got planning permission. So um, it is difficult. I, I appreciate it's difficult. But if you buy a building that you cannot do with it, what you're expecting to do and what you're, you know, so many people come to me with an Excel spreadsheet and say, oh, this is this is how it stacks up financially. Well, yeah, it stacks up financially in your head. <laughs> but if you never get planning permission, you may as well just rip that to shreds because you're never going to get anywhere. So, you know, oh, well, the, you know, and everybody looks at the numbers and the money first. And I know because I'm a planner, I look at it slightly differently um, because I'm not a property developer and I don't I, I do planning and that's my thing. Um, and I understand. But when I say to people, well, yeah, you've allocated for, I don't know, 20 flats or something. But do you know that if you build 20 flats on there, then the council are going to come after you for affordable housing contribution? And that is going to be thousands, tens of thousands of pounds, or you're going to have to give up 30 percent, usually, of those flats to affordable housing. And then what what are affordable housing tenants going to do to your market tenants when you're um, trying to rent the rest of the uh, units out? On, on the subject of affordable housing, what, what's. I know I said I was going to be one question, but that's an interesting subject. Um, what, what's the scheme limit? It, didn't it used to be nine at one point? No, oh, depends on the council. OK, so the, the national limit is it tends to. Well, it generally in urban areas, it, te it tended to be 15. But then they said it can be much, much lower in rural areas where there is a greater need for affordable housing. Um, some councils say 10. Some councils still say 15. Other councils in rural areas will say three. Well, so it, it depends on council to council, really. Yeah, and it depends on some councils will accept, um, will require on-site uh, units to be handed over to a registered social landlord or, a, a, you know, if they do it in-house with councils, most councils don't. Um, some councils will um, say, yes, you can give us a, contra a financial contribution. You don't have to provide it on site. They will take that contribution, use it on a site elsewhere. Um, but a lot of councils, if you want to do a financial contribution, they will require a viability assessment to prove the reason why you cannot provide the housing on the site. Okay, great. Um, all right, I'm. I'm not going. I've, I've got. I've sneaked in an extra question. So, um, quick thing. Um, is there is there anything on the horizon we need to watch out for? So we need to have you back on. It's, it's a sort of well, um, not really from a, a general permitted development order, but there is. I mean, the planning bill. Um, that we've now we're now hearing the brakes have been put on that and it's all being laid at Michael Gove's feet and that's not fair because when the planning bill came out last autumn it was roundly criticized and so and that was when Robert Jenrick was still in post so uh, it has been criticized this whole zoning of um, areas so that, you know, you, it's almost a rubber stamp job. It's not really, but that's what people are calling it. Um, so that you get areas of zoning where planning permission is almost a given uh, and, and development. It's been criticized by um, objectors who obviously in the more rural leafy constituencies don't want that to happen. So there is a there is a, a national political concern 
um, because I think there was a liberal Democrat win uh, in a conservative seat um, because of this issue. I can't remember the, the constituency. Um, and because of that, I think Boris Johnson and the new cabinet and Michael Gove are talking about watering down um, these planning reforms the pla that came out in the planning bill last year, talking about um, changing it. So that is yet to come out. I don't think that's going to come out before Christmas, but you never know. But there, there may be some more tweaks uh, to prior approval. I don't think so. I think we're done with with the with the on the ground stuff i think the next big thing is going to be the overarching of bringing out a new planning bill okay so that's a bit like the american system where there's own areas yeah. yes yeah. It's, it's very anglicized but it's 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 a simplified system yes yeah, yeah and and but but all of the stuff you've discussed is in place now there's no oh. No dates we have to watch out for, like we would no do. dates, no dates you have to watch out for. It's it's all all of the stuff that was expiring and you had to be aware of is all gone. We're all uh, working to the new system now. Fantastic. Look, thank you for your time. Really enlightening. You're welcome. Um, thank you for inviting me. No, no, fantastic. Uh to anybody who's listening, please don't don't waste 10 years of your life. Just go and get yourself a consultation. You know, it's, it'll probably be the best money you'll ever spend, I'm guessing. Um, look, Linda, please come back. Thank you for your time. Okay. Much appreciated. And please come back and give us some more interesting case studies that you've come across. Sorry, earlier on you were saying you did your first Class AN or something. Uh, class MA approval, yes. Yeah, so in, in, uh, is, go through what that means again. You, you've got to build it. You've got it to was converting. It. Well, actually, it, it was a bit more complicated than that because we did... Um, on the upper floors, uh, the applicant, and uh, I submitted all of this before the end of July, I submitted all of this in July under the old process. So there was a, um, a fully permitted two flats on the upper floor above um, a shop. Um, that was, I put that in as a certificate of lawfulness saying, this is permitted development. Please confirm and grant a certificate certificate of lawfulness to say that these two flats that we're going to put in are lawful under the permitted development right that was approved we got um, a certificate of lawfulness a couple of weeks ago so the upper floor was sorted then uh, what was happening was we were making the all of the ground floor was um, shop so we were making that much smaller bringing it all forward 30 or 40 yeah. square meters to a shop side door and a front door and then the rest of the it, it wasn't a, a massive scheme but you have to get everything in the right order and get it done properly and then the back was being converted into um, a flat with lots of natural light and a, you know good windows and and all of the spaces set up properly that was done under actually it was submitted under the old class M, um, but it's been, because it's come out after the 31st of July, it's been granted as a class MA, and that's a prior approval that now lasts for three years. Fantastic. So it'd be great to get um, you on that detailed view on that. So yeah, this, yeah. Uh, well, as they start coming through and I do more of these, then yeah, I'll, I'll build up a, a library of things to go through. Fantastic. Thank you very much for ah, your time. thank you dill i'm going for a glass of wine now darling um I, I well you know i won't be joining you unfortunately no 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 but you know so if anything else does come up i'll be in touch and um we'll do another one of these and you're live streaming on facebook and and all sorts youtube as well Woo -hoo. yeah good one all right so thank you very much I, I, thank you I, I Cheers, will I will not keep you from your cheese and wine. <laughs> Ranji, bye bye. Great, Ranji, are you still there? If, if we can Thank get you. another, yeah. So just just give us more about your, your Ajivan's fantastic one million step challenge. Uh, if we can just round up on that. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I just like to say is that uh, it's a good cause, as uh, as you know, a lot of families up and down the country, somewhere along line some generations uh, going through this. So it's a good cause. Please donate generously, no matter how small, every little helps. 
uh, go onto our uh, onto uh, uh, the web link that we put on earlier on and uh, donate. Yeah, and it, I'll, I'll post the video of my family's history on Saturday or tomorrow on the Facebook page. If if you can, put, and we're offering, we're actually, uh, I'm offering a little bit of free stuff to help you as well. So we're gonna we're gonna put this on when it's ready to go. So for anybody watching, please. Uh, at least investigate and educate yourself. That, you know, it's it's not always about the money; it's it's about the awareness as well. So, thank you for your time. Brilliant, and I think we better better stop talking now and do some work, or maybe, maybe look at what we're doing for our recreation. Linda's off with her stuff. Look, thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoyed that. That's quite a interesting program. Thank you. Very we'll, be, much. we'll be back next. Next Thursday, same time, five o'clock. Excellent. Thank See you. everybody then. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe and and whatever they do on YouTube, you know. I, I, I won't say what my favorite YouTuber says. So I've got to find the end button now, but